Welcome back to Ferocious Education, this is Zed. Today we're going to be talking about OCUGN, going with the ticker OCUGN. So we're going to bring new pieces of due diligence, technical analysis, and what I think about this one. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So OCUGN. Now we did talk about this one multiple times before, my last video is in the description below. But the main reason why it's currently jumping is relating towards the news that was put out on July 30th, 8.45am. And that is that they have a conference call on August 6th at 8.30am Eastern Standard Time to discuss the second quarter financial results for 2021 and provide business updates. So we do anticipate that that kind of quarter uh, presentation or conference call will go on it's very similarly to the last presentation that was posted up and it will talk about the business updates, the vaccine updates, specifically as well related towards the vaccine pipeline progress and the Baharat Biotech progress on that. And so that is the main kind of uh, buzz that OCGN is going about is the Baharat Biotech. And if you haven't heard before or haven't watched my previous videos, you would know that Covaxin is currently working on bringing Baharat Biotech into Canada and the US with almost a 50-50% uh, into the profits of the sales of this vaccine, the Baharat Biotech. And we'll go through research papers to identify why this one should be considered in the start. Now, first off, how the Covaxin works. So there is currently a research paper that comes towards it and discusses a little bit, but the New York Times actually showcases it really nicely. This is a, usually a paid version of the page, but I got access to it. So first off, it says how the Baharat Biotech vaccines work. So this is one of the most popular vaccines in India, and it's authorized as vaccine for emergency use starting on January 3rd, with trial vaccine showing efficacy of 78%. And so a vaccine is made out of coronavirus, so Covaxin works by teaching the immune system to make antibodies against the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus. The antibodies attach to viral proteins such as cold spike proteins that the studies uh, or studs its surface. To create the Covaxin, Baharat Biotech uses a sample of coronavirus isolated by India National Institute of Virology. So killing the virus. Once the research produced large stocks of the coronaviruses, they do or they dose them with a chemical called beta propylactin the compound disabled coronavirus by bonding on their genes. The inactivated coronavirus could no longer replicate, but their protein, including spikes, remains intact. Now the research then drew off the inactivated virus and mixed them with tiny amounts of aluminum-based compounds call an adjuvant, adjuvants stimulate the immune system to boost its response to the vaccine. The inactivated virus has been used for a century. Jonas Salk used them to create his polio vaccine in 1950s and their base for vaccines against other diseases including rabies, or rabies and hepatitis A. Promoting an immune response, because the coronavirus in COVID or Covaxin are dead, they can be injected into an arm without causing COVID-19. Once inside the body, some of the inactivated viruses are swallowed up by a type of immune cells called antigens or antigens presenting cells. And the antigen representing cell tears the coronavirus apart and displays some of its fragments on the surface and it's also called helper t cell which may detect the fragments if the fragments fits into one of the surface proteins the t cell becomes activated and can help recruit other immune cells to respond to the vaccine and it goes on later on about how to make antibodies or how the antibodies are made and then stopping the virus and also taking a look into that it's a two dose vaccine the first one is well first dose and then the second one is given 28 days after and it does give you some of the timelines of some of the events that's happened so currently uh, it still shows 78 percent against mild and moderate and severe uh, covid itself and now towards the research paper but before going forward if you would like to see more contents like this make sure to please subscribe and leave notifications on a lot of amazing folks watching this video right now and hasn't hit the subscribe button so please consider doing so also don't forget to drop a like to this video and if you would like to join our discord to discuss other stocks or just this talk totally free in the description below 
Now, in terms of this research paper, evaluation of safety and immuno or immunogenicity of advanced THI skewed whole virin inactivated SARS-CoV-2 vaccine, you're able to see here that in this paragraph, they said our potency results compare quite favorably with those reported in the literature for similar COVID-19 vaccine. The inactivated SARS-2 vaccine candidate has been shown to induce high levels of NAP tilters or titers in mice and rats to provide protection against SARS-CoV-2. A purified inactivated SARS-CoV-2 virus vaccine candidate has also been shown to induce SARS-CoV-2 specific NAB in mice and rats, and these, these antibodies potentially or potently neutralized 10 representative SARS-CoV-2 strains, um, indicative of possible broader neuralization or neutralization ability against SARS-2 COVID strain circulating the world, which basically refers to as well the current strains such as Delta variant. Now, in terms of the current institutional buyers, they remain very bullish for the most part. You get to see that on the 5th, you only had additions, so that's today. You're able to see around probably closer to 50,000 shares being added. Now, some companies are, or some institutions are liquidating, others are buying, and there's 100,000 of shares going both ways. Insiders, you get to see on the 30th, you did have a sell by Compel Uday, who sold at a price point of 6.8 but he only sold 10,000 shares and his remaining shares are 550,000 shares. And that happens a lot when people when insiders start selling some of their shares, people start freaking out. And we gotta understand is that they have exercising abilities that's part of how they're paid or right to buy. And then they sell some because they gotta feed their parents or family or they want a new kitchen counter or whatever it is. And moving on towards other news. So this is related towards Canada. So Canada is to review the vaccine for emergency use authorization. And the big thing about this one here is that the international studies face vaccine hurdles they prep for campus life in Canada. And a big part of it is that you want to look in as a Canadian government on the issue of international vaccines. If they're not approved in Canada, then technically the people who come in from abroad, let's say India, who have the Baharat Biotech vaccine are not considered fully vaccinated. So there is some logistics to be clarified there from the government of Canada, and that's what I'm talking about because I'm Canadian, but I do imagine that it's very similar in the US as well. And so there probably is some kind of lobbying towards that as well. Now, in terms of Bharat Biotech Covaxin vaccine sales to be insane, I don't think that Canada is one of these one of these places that really requires these vaccines to be sold to them because they have one of the highest vaccines uh, bought out compared to population. And at the same time, around 80% of all Canadians that are eligible have already received first dose and a big portion of them has already received second dose. So this could be more of a booster shot rather than uh, a start of a vaccine or a start of a vaccine regimen. Let's move on towards technical analysis. Now on the one month, one day perspective, we're starting to see here that the price point is currently even above the 50 SMA and the 200 SMA. So those are moving averages that are very critical to identify stock movement as being bullish or bearish. And in this case, it's actually considered bullish. 30 EMA is above the 10 SMA, so that might be a bit bearish, but they're both pinpointing upwards, indicating a possible and a very strong bullish action. The ADX on its own, though, is currently at 761, the ADX, the average directional index. 761 doesn't show any strong movement, but at least it's actually grabbing up from around the mid 60s so it is indication that if this continues on with tomorrow there might actually be a bullish action or a momentum action the value percent r is at negative 1.972 or 1972 and you're seeing that this one here is considered very much marginally closer towards the overbought so it is go going on overbought a little bit but the 20 or negative 20 level is the overbought line and I would say it still has some room to move up forward based on the billion percent R alone. In terms of the MACD, that is bullish and you get to see the histograms are increasing in capacity and that indicates a bullish move and momentum for first time in a couple of days, it's above positive, above the zero level. So it's currently at 0.15, still very low momentum, but it has potential to push forward. Stochastic fast and stochastic slow, both are pinpointing upwards, indicating that there is a possibility that there's another leg up for this one. 
And on the moving average parts, expect to be trading this one at 768 in the top and 629 in the bottom. So this is moving average bands, very similar to the Bollinger bands. They both agree on these two levels. And in terms of Fibonacci retracements, and the reason why I want to highlight this one is because high frequency traders use it. So the current support that was a very strong resistance is at 731. Below there, 460 and 22 cents. Resistances on the Fibonacci retracements are 950, 1169, 1481, and 1877. Now, on a price line action, we're able to see that there is a very strong resistance hitting this one around the 763. Above there, 874. Above there, you're looking into 1032, going up to 1069, and then upwards to a little bit of around 1206. That's a very strong one, followed by 1381, and then 1589, and then to 1877. Current supports and a very strong one that is, is around the 751. That's a very critical one. If it does drop, the next strong one would be around 697. And then below there, the next critical one would be at 620. And then down to around 591, 523. And then down to around 357, 274, and 208. In terms of analyst recommendations, you're able to see that 11 days ago there was an initiated coverage with a price target of around $15. With a buy position, this person's success rate is 46% with an average return of 41%. So currently, this one has a rating of moderate buy based on 5 analysts in the last 3 months, 2 buys and 3 holds, and an average price target of around $9.30, which is around 23% upside from where it is right now comes to the question to Ed, what do you think about this one? So first off, in terms of patterns, you're able to look that, well, perhaps we could be having some sort of pattern at this level, but it's really hard to see. But what you're able to see here is that there is some kind of an uptrend um, as you get to see from this line. And you could say that currently it seems to be a bit squeezing up or downwards uh, into more of an uptrend, which is a very bullish thing in that sense. But in terms of this line, I do anticipate for it to continue growing when that is a very bullish thing. But there could be some oscillations back and forth towards this trend line. And I think that in the next few days, perhaps tomorrow before pre-market, it will continue on pushing. But if Friday does show us more of a drop in price, that is relating to them anticipating some massive news based on other cycles. And then realizing that, oh, this is just a normal update. Nothing special about this one kind of drops but if there's a surprise you might actually see this be uh, or jumping very strongly and this might actually bring in more investors coming in and putting in their money here so it could be also a bullish action on friday unfortunately only time will tell but usually with presentations and conferences the price dips below that or below uh, a certain level uh, that will be the next support after the presentations keep that in mind because that's very important but over the weekend i do anticipate some recovery happening in coming in towards monday if it does drop on friday what do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day. Now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that gives picks for free. It's not pump and dumps. We just things we think about, swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free free we run on tips here and you can ask me questions suggest stocks etc it's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one feel free to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day